Good morning, Eagles, and welcome to Chapel. I'm Joe Sutton. It's the movement that has the world watching the Middle East. The terrorist group ISIS has performed three public executions and is now threatening a fourth. Eagle 7 News was able to sit down with Professor Boyd Seavers to discuss recent events and why ISIS is taking such drastic steps to get their message out. It's been a top story for weeks. ISIS has the world fixated on the Middle East. Professor Boyd Seavers lived in Israel for eight years, and this experience allows him to have insight into recent events. Sensitivity to awareness of defense against terroristic acts is just a normal part of life. You have to be that way, and we in America were, were quite immune to that for very long, and 9-11 just ushered us into that world. But it's the public executions that have the world terrified. Professor Seavers believes the murders may serve as means to lash back. Great destruction to them, well what can they do back to us? What they have that they can do is that they have these journalists and then they can kill them and then use that as a public way of saying, see we are getting back at you, we can hurt you. The U.S. Armed Forces have been active in the Middle East for years, but the price of this involvement is steep, costing the U.S. over $1.5 trillion since 2001. But is military force the solution? Professor Seavers doesn't believe so. On the other hand, we can't afford to spend a trillion dollars to do that with each time, and it doesn't solve the problem. Which is how to best aid this culture, a question that U.S. leaders have been asking for years. But Professor Seavers believes that when it comes to helping the Middle East, the U.S. will need a new strategy. They're not going to take on democracy like we have. They don't think the way that we do. It's not going to work there the way that it works here. And so how can we best help them get a good, stable sort of a situation? The U.S. is currently assessing the situation in high hopes of destroying ISIS. For Eagle 7 News, I'm Annie Kelby. The second annual refuel conference was held last Saturday at Northwestern. Youth leaders, volunteers, and parents had the chance to hear nine different speakers, including Jeff Bedke, John Acuff, and Kara Powell. Jim Johnson, coordinator of the event, said that the conference was fantastic. It had even doubled in size from last year. He is looking forward for next year in hopes that the event grows in, in numbers. The Lady Eagles are coming home. The women's soccer team will have their first home game on the new field today. We talked to senior captains about the new season and goals they have as a team. We are very excited about being on this new field. We feel that it brings energy, excitement, and enthusiasm to us players. The team has high hopes for the season. Um, we're hoping to get to the playoffs this year and try to go on even further because um, we have we had a lot of talent coming in. We had um, 14 returners and 11 really good freshmen. Um, so I think. Just hopefully glorifying God while playing our sport, um, having fun and doing work. But winning games isn't the only thing on the team's mind. They've set goals for not only on the field, but off the field as well. Um, we're really focusing on a team atmosphere this year, so working all together and setting girls up for um, success on the field is what's really important to us this year. I feel like um, each of us have the ability to do um, what we can do, so I just working together and um, setting each other up for those finishes is what's going to be really important to us this year. From Eagle 7 News, I'm Joe Sutton. When it comes to free food, college students will do just about anything, so it was no surprise that Hartle Cookie Night was once again a hit this past Monday. This is Andrew Gullickson with Eagle 7 News. Tonight is Hartle Cookie Night, and let's see if these guys are excited. All right, what would you do for a cookie tonight? I'm a poor senior, so I'd do anything. This guy's ready. He's got his Martha cookie box here. Dude, uh, what would you be willing to do for a cookie tonight? Um, I would do a lot for a cookie. I would sing, dance. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. All right. What have you guys been asking people to do for cookies tonight? Mostly dance. And we also got sung happy birthday. Really? Is it your birthday today? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cute. All right. Well, do you mind if I dance for a cookie quick? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Well, it better be a good dance then since there's only a few cookies left. So, all right. I uh, don't know what dance I should do. So, um, how about Gangnam style?
Did that give me a cookie? Yeah. All right, sweet. Thank you so much. And this is what remains of the cookies left on a Harlow cookie night. <laughs> Drew, obviously a goof. Thanks for saving us cookies, by the way. Well, that's the, all the weekly news we have for you today. For more campus news, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channel. I'm Joe Sutton, and stay classy, Eagles.